Hi, I recently played a live set entirely using an iPhone and I'd like to talk about why I did that and how I did that. Nice, isn't it? That's right, who knew it? Mobile phones can sound good. Of course they bloody can. After all, what's inside your mutable instruments Eurorack modules, mate? Except mobile phone chips. Mobile phone chips are what is powering the digital revolution of Eurorack. Of course they sound good. And actually there's some really slick things that have happened to mobile phone technology in terms of making music in recent years, which make the whole thing possible and easy in ways that I didn't really appreciate. Firstly, though, you played a set using an iPhone. Yeah, I did. And it sounded a bit like this. Can you tell that I like popular beat combination, the Aphex Twins, selected ambient works? I don't know if you've heard of it. Perhaps I'm slightly more channeling Katerina Barbieri. But actually, weirdly, the inspiration for doing kind of ambient stuff on my phone particularly came from Susumu Yokota and the album Sakura. And about a year ago, I went on holiday to Iceland. I highly recommend going on holiday to Iceland. It is a beautiful, extraordinary country. It has some of the most striking and impressive scenery that I've seen in any nation on earth. And I just had the chillest, chillest time. Because in the evenings, there's not a huge amount to do. It's very windy and blustery, at least at the time when we went. So you just drink your expensive beer and stare into the distance. And the distance is beautiful. Now, when I went over to Iceland, I thought I'd quite like to get some new apps to mess around with. Historically, when I lived in London especially, I would spend a lot of time commuting, and commuting is perfect music-making time on a phone. When I first got into the iPhone, when it was in its early days, I really couldn't do very much musically. My first kind of big app joy was Nano Studio, and with Nano Studio, I actually ended up making like a whole EP. If you sponsor me on Patreon for $4 or above, you can dig in and get that. And Nano Studio is just awesome. It's like kind of Cubase. You can sort of make music in real time gravy. What was good about Nano Studio is it was just very focused and you could do it anywhere. So no matter where I was, whether or not it was the best sounding app is kind of irrelevant. It's like the whole camera adage. The best camera is the one you've got with you. For most of us, the best camera we've got is our iPhones. So by default, this also becomes the best music making app I've got. And fast forward a while, you've got the iPad, you've got things like Sampler with an R, which is just a beautiful application. I think something that really exemplifies like w something that could only exist on a tablet or a phone, which is obviously a great thing, and called Gadget, which is kind of reasony in the sense it's got these really nicely fleshed out machines and you can build whole tracks on it. And indeed, I made whole tracks on called Gadget as well. Loved it. Anyway, this is a long winded way of saying when I went to Iceland, someone somewhere mentioned this app. 
called synthesizer. Synthesizer is basically like a really, really basic polysynth and sequencer. There's not a lot to it. Basically, you have um, a sequence, and I can make it different lengths, up to 32 steps, but I'll do, let's do 16. And then you just add notes in, and it sounds like this. Pretty. And you can undab notes. Nice. I love that stuff. In my music making discipline, I've come to realize that I just love repetition. I love blissed out ambient loops. I love Steve Reich. I love selected ambient works. So these things where there's a little hook and the hook just repeats and there's a kind of innate sort of ravey groove to it. I love that. And basically what's making the sound is the little built-in sound engine. It's the two oscillators. Second oscillator is tuned up two semitones. You've got an amp envelope ADSR. You've got some LFOs. I love having LFO one controlling vibrato. You've got different shapes. The second one I've got doing a really slow um, adjustment of the filter as well, or of the filter. So over three bars, it slowly sweeps the filter up and down, making it go darker at points and brighter at other points. And then you've got filter envelope, you've got a filter. Bring this down. That is the application of filter envelope to the filter. You can have resonance. Oh yeah. And then you've got effects. Reverb. Which sounds pretty nice. And then delay. And I've generally, my default mode, when I went to Iceland, I just started making loops. And I realized that just having tons of delay. So I've got the delay at like 85 to 95% with high level. Means that you can just build these like little ambient ambient vibes and then in the sequencer you've got some controls the main one the main 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 thing is that all of these notes that I'm dabbing are within a scale in this case major pentatonic scale there are lots of scales built in you can make your own custom scales though I have not and um, tons of different scales to explore meaning that every time you dab a note it will be in key there are also some shortcuts, things like if you push two fingers, it will clear one octave. And if I push three, it will clear the whole synth. Plus you can do the same thing in reverse and bring them back. But in the sequencing, you can also do operations like shift the sequence up a semitone. You can't see the sequence because it's behind that little screen. You can go up. And then you can flip the sequence from right to left or up down invert it so you can very quickly take a kind of stale loop and then invert it and change it round you can change the rate that things are running at various other little bits and bobs but one very 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 cool thing is that it has Conway's game of life built into it for the sequencing area so what I do is if I draw oh no that didn't work if I go draw select custom area I can draw a little box, and then, if I say life, within this box, Conway's Game of Life, as you well know, of course, that mathematical sort of um, system, will start playing. So if you draw shapes, with every generation, Conway's Game of Life, cellular automata, is played out, and wherever there's going to be a lit 
square, you're going to hear a note. So you could create these gorgeous, like, evolving melodies by drawing in patterns and allowing the system to generatively, like, flow. I did not do any of that in my live show. <laughs> but you can do it. Um, it requires a little more forethought to get melody structures that I think are musically satisfying. Um, so what I did during my live performance was that I basically started with a synthesizer loop, um, which is Moogfest for nice. Because it is. And I'd basically just been playing around with this kind of setup. Major pentatonic with the second oscillator tuned down a fifth. And as promised, with a metric hecton of delay and reverb. And so with that core sound, this is basically what I've been messing around with for like nearly a year. Just playing around, making little loops. And I mean, even when I was on the plane back, I made a few other ones. What's Mergfest for funk? That is nice. Boom, 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 boom. And so what I'm doing during the performance is basically starting with this Moogfest loop, you know, a starting point. And then for the entirety of the rest of the performance, I will basically be editing the sequence in real time just on my phone. And that was the performance. Now, there is other stuff that I'll get into, but I just want to talk about a thematic point, which is how cool is Moogfest as a festival that they allow me to do something like this, which is quite honestly the opposite of, you know, the whole world of gear fetishism, of modular, of all of that stuff. What blows my mind about Moogfest. I was walking around and seeing acts that I'd never really seen before, people I didn't know, but people who were doing really interesting things. Like I walked into the 21C, which was the venue where I played, um, like the day before, two days before, and there was a guy just doing insane free drumming where his drums were hooked up to like piezos or some other kind of controllers. And he was just basically going nine to the dozen. He was clearly improvising. He did not have like songs to play by any stretch of the imagination, but he was just creatively exploring music and allowing that process to be a performance. And that is just all I do on my modular when I'm playing live. I've basically engineered a set of controls and I'm just free jamming them in front of the audience. And so it's fundamentally exactly the same thing that I've been doing for like a year with my modular. Um, but what's nice about this is unlike the modular, I rely so much on the machine to make the melody. I don't have this precision input because I'm trying to musically create too much sound. What's nice about this and what honestly Moogfest mentally encouraged me to do was accept that music can be simpler and why not just embrace the pure meditative hypnotic simplicity of just repeating phrases and I must say that when I went to Iceland the artist that was in my mind was not Richard D. James but Susumu Yokota Listen to Sasumu Yokota's Sakura album and tell me that that is not the blissiest, simplest, ambient album you could hope to hear. I think it freaking rules. So I was inspired by Yokota primarily. And then all you do is just work it. Listen carefully. And then occasionally there'll be moments where you're like, ah, oh, damn it, I really need a lot to change. And of course, part of the, the sort of point to make was that this is an anti-technology performance, obviously using an enormous amount of technology, using like the most advanced phone in the world, and you're using incredible software, and it sounds, you know, 
Uh, it's sort of that's slightly ironic, but you take my point. It's not about buying boxes. Um, because the app costs $4.99, um, I would often do the flip by inverting the sequence, literally flipping that upside down. You create a completely different section, and then you're like, I'll oh, bring in some low notes. Okay, so that's synthesizer and the core of what I'm doing. Just literally flipping, inverting, bringing things down, bringing things out, applying some vibrato. There's a kind of thing nice in it. Ooh. And then, cool. So if you watch the video, you're like, wait a minute, there were bloody beats. Where were the beats coming from? Okay, so this app called Orm. So Orm, A-U-M, Orm. And by the way, Synthesizer is spelt with an X and with no E. I'll put links to all of this in the description. Orm is basically a app that unifies apps and adds in audio recording and looping. So I've loaded Synthesizer into Orm and you're actually hearing Synthesizer through Orm. And what Orm lets me do is also load other apps. So I'm going to load Korg Gadget. And Korg Gadget is the one I mentioned earlier, which you can make whole tracks from. And I have, and it's awesome and fun and, and deeply entertaining. But so what I did was I pre-prepared some loops with this, with um, Korg Gadget, including some kicks and basically some percussion, because I was like, you just need that kind of selected ambient worksy percussion to come in. So if I get this going again, we should hear in a sec. And if I go back to all, you see that? What's cool about Orm is you can also load things into the tracks. So I've got a bunch of the audio damage, shout out Christopher, um, the audio damage plugins, which I bought, Dubstation, which is the delay, EOS for the reverb. Um, and I also bought, well, I got a pack, which got some other stuff, but the main ones are Dubstation, which is a really nice delay, which I'm not using on here, but I am using on some samples. I'll come into a sec. But what's really nice about the channels is that you can do the thing that is in that Model 1 mixer that um, our friend Ebsidic does, where you've got low pass and high pass in series. So you can do nice kind of band passy like things as a way of blending elements in. So just take all the bass away, bring it all in. Or like Stevio, he uses filters as mixing tools. He doesn't use volume knobs, although you have got a volume slider here. Um, so then I can blend and mix these things in. And that's particularly more relevant on here. There. And then if I come over here. Shout out to that little sound, which is in the London, London machine. One of the default sounds in the core gadget, but like totally fits this. And that's the built in reverb. But as you hear, you can just apply a little bit of low passage just to like soften and bed that down. And then instead of having to go into core gadget and mute the kick, I can use a high pass as a way of just going, take the kick out quick and then bring it back in. So it's like using filters as ways to like, you know, bring things in and out rather than using volume. So can you hear there is also like this kind of birdie Tweety Bird sample, which if you've listened to the set, is kind of throughout the whole thing. Well, that's because there is a kind of Tweety Birdie thing. And basically this is a sample. You can load samples into Orm and Orm plays them as loops. So I was at Alex Mayolo's house, shout out Alex from the band Triple X Snacks. Hell yes, I'm a snackser. What a band. Um, Alex had put me up in his house very kindly. And so while he was off to practice, I just sat on the porch drinking Pabst. Um, <laughs> and basically recorded birdsong and me just scrunching around in the gravel 
just because I was like, I need some textural stuff as well, just over this. And it is remarkable how it just takes your ear and just focuses you a little. And you've got these sounds just kind of floating in the back. And then, as I mentioned, I have the Audio Damage Dub Station, which is a, just a nice sort of analogue style delay. And that kind of pads out the birds. So that when you hear a sound, there's a kind of call and response in both sides. It's nice. And then... Oh, what a lovely singing voice you have. Well, everyone's got a lovely singing voice if you drown it in reverb. So that's me singing on Alex's couch. Alex wasn't in the room at the time. Um, I'm basically just singing a little loop in key. And you can record in ORM, so you can use it to record something that's precisely the loop length that you need. And so I just sung something in key that works over the key that I knew I would be using in this set. And then lastly, at one point, uh, those of you who are at Moog Fest will be all too familiar with the sound. I am from England, if you haven't been able to tell. And what I love the most about America, beyond chicken and biscuits, is the sound of your trains, that tritone train sound, that gets me right in the feels. It sounds wicked. Um, and I was like, we've got to have that sound because if you walk around, Durham, oh yeah, piano. I also recorded some notes of piano off my iPad off another app, and that's in the background with some EOS reverb. Those of you who walked around Moogfest and Durham, you know that sound. So love it. That, uh, it's just like gets me. Um, unfortunately, that sound is almost impossible to tune. I was like, oh, I could tune the train and it'll be a tr tune train. But of course, because the train is always coming towards you and then always going away, as you well know, because of the Doppler effect, the Doppler effect means it is always rising in pitch as it comes to you and falling. So it's never at a particular frequency. Anyway, cool story, bro. So all my set is, is just this. Blending these elements together, going, oh, where's my other kick pattern? drop it and then doing timbal changes electronic music it's easy, but you do have to have some taste. That's the thing that takes years to develop. Or if you've got about 74 minutes, listen to that Susumu Yokota album and you can just develop it instantaneously. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Fun to play. I love this app. I like making music with this. I've written so many noodles on this thing. And my plan is to make an EP of the noodles. That was always what I was intending to do. But it just so happened that I happened to be at one of the most progressive and encouraging and welcoming festivals in the world that they thought, hey, cool man, um, we're actually fine with the idea of you playing live with a phone. Um, we won't burn you. After all, like I say, all that's in these Eurorack modules is the chips in our phones. And with that, I bid you a good deal. <laughs>
a good deal. <laughs> yes, mate. Thank you for watching. You can watch my set. You can buy my music. And you should buy all of these applications as well. I will put links below. Muchas gracias. See ya.